My name is Kristen Baumgartner and I'm with Baracus Blum Computer Consulting. Today I'll be reviewing the custom office module for Sage 100. Baracus Blum Computer Consulting has been selling and implementing Sage products for over 30 years and is one of the top Sage 100 solution providers in the country. We are dedicated to helping our clients continuously improve and have industry expertise that comes from years of experience and real world knowledge. In today's presentation, I'll be reviewing what the Sage 100 custom office module is used for, the main data housed within the module, and also look at some of the options to make panel changes to your Sage 100 install. Custom office is primarily used for access to the customizer selection to modify Sage 100 panels, user-defined field and table maintenance, and user-defined script maintenance. Custom office reports can also be found here. Custom Office is a core module within Sage 100, and all customers have access to this module. Often, customers will use this module if there's data that needs to be recorded in Sage 100 that does not have an existing field or to make data entry tasks more efficient for users. Let's take a look at what Sage 100's Custom Office looks like. In my environment, on my left-hand side are the modules that I have access to based on my security permissions. At the bottom of this list is our custom office module. Now, as I mentioned, this is a core module and it has many Sage capabilities. Since this is an overview of this module, we're gonna cover some of the basic changes that can be made with custom office. We're gonna start off with our user-defined field and table maintenance. When I launch this task, I am able to see all of the Sage modules that I currently have in my environment. If I were to go to a particular module and double click on it, I can see all of the existing tables where a user defined field or an additional table could be added. If I wanna close this, I can double click again. When I right click on the same module, this is how I would be able to add a user defined table. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on just the user defined field. So a single field as opposed to a table. I am gonna go down into this last folder, which is called Recents. This will show me all of my recent user-defined fields that have been modified or added to my environment. So I'm gonna jump into my sales order header. This is the table that's been modified most recently. When I double click, I get an option to edit my fields. In looking at this information, I'm able to see all of my user-defined fields that are set up for this particular table. If I look at one of my examples, the customer default warehouse, and double click on it, here you can see what my field name is listed as, you can see the description, and you'll notice that this particular user-defined field is locked right now. If a UDF is in use for the current table, the control type, the data type, uh, the string length, nothing can be really changed in it. So this is an existing one, and so it does have my options locked out on me. It is set as a multi-line option. A multi-line option is basically a free form type of field. And I have a maximum length already set for three characters for this particular UDF. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the validation, which I don't have any currently set up, but validation and data sources can also be referenced within a user-defined field. Because this one's locked, we're gonna create a brand new UDF that we can kind of see what an open table would look like. To create a new user-defined field, we would hit this plus button on the right-hand side. I would be able to give my field a new name, so I'm gonna give this one customer release date. Maybe this is a piece of information that I want to record. It's gonna be for my sales orders, but it's not a field that I currently have access to in Sage. I'm able to give the field a description. So again, maybe I wanna change that to actually read date in my description. And I can choose if I want to manually enter this information or if I'm leveraging a current Sage business object for this information. We're gonna go with the manual entry because we are just setting up a simplified UDF for our presentation today. Once I've clicked okay, you can see we are looking at the same screen, but now we're unlocked. We can choose, we can make those choices here as we set up. Here, I can choose to again, have that multi-line, which is a free form field. 
I can use a Dropbox option. I can do a list box. I can have a checkbox. Here, I can say, you know what? My data type might not be a string where it's a free form piece of information. Maybe because this is my customer release date, I actually wanna be able to leverage a date here. You can see by changing the options that we choose, we're going to have different options down here that are enabled for us. So again, if I go back to string, you can see I'm getting my display attributes to show. If I go into numeric, it will give me a, pre a default for my numeric setup. And again, I'm gonna choose that date option because it's a customer release date. Again, if I choose to, and I, and I have the experience, I can add validation and data sources to a UDF if it makes sense here. Because we're doing this kind of as a manual entry, this is just going to be a field, but we're gonna reuse a date data type. When I click okay, you can see it's now added to my user-defined fields for this particular module and this particular table. You can also see aside from the field names, description, the types and the links, you can see I have statuses. If something's been added to a user defined field but not yet updated or used on the panels, you're gonna see that in your statuses here as well. When I click update, this will add it to my current table. All right. So one thing that is extremely important is when a user defined field is created, it can be very important to map it to other panels. As an example here, I'm gonna go ahead and say close anyway. We're gonna keep that one pending and you can see it's showing as pending down at the bottom. As an example, if we did add a user defined field to a sales order, that user defined field might have to go through a couple other documents. We, maybe we do want that to translate to our sales order history. Maybe that sales order is gonna be promoted to an invoice and we want that to go through invoice and AR history again. What we can do is have those fields map to move forward depending on how we set up the user defined field. So for an example here, if I go to my sales order history, when I look at those user defined fields and I have not updated that last one I just added, you can see those three UDFs are populating here because I do want them to promote all the way through sales order entry all the way through to sales order history. So this is, again has been focused on adding a brand new field that maybe we don't have in Sage. And we wanna do that as a user defined field, something that we can enter information in. I'm gonna close this out for a second and we're gonna talk about our user defined script maintenance. Now, user defined script maintenance is used to create, assign and, comp and compile scripts for table, column and panel events. The creation of the script is a more complicated process than creating a user-defined field. And the tables can be more complicated, especially if we have third-party solutions and software in place in our Sage 100 system. User-defined scripts can automate a process. And usually that process is always gonna require the same information. And what's cool is a single script can be tied to multiple events. So for an example, a script could be written to enforce a particular validation for an item code, which then you could attach that script to the item code column in your sales order entry, uh, in your invoice data entry, and in transaction entry. So again, a single script can affect multiple tasks within the Sage 100 environment. Scripting, because it is a very complex process, we do recommend working with a Veracus Blum Computer Consulting team member if scripts are needed or you think you might need them in your Sage 100 environment. One of the other tasks in Custom Office is our customizer selection. When I launch this task, this again shows me all of the different panels that I have access to in my Sage 100 environment. So in this example, perhaps we want to modify something on our customer maintenance. When we go into accounts receivable, we can see, okay, these are the breakdowns I have. Um, again, I wanna modify something on customer maintenance. This can be very difficult to find now the correct panel that we're looking to modify. So before we were looking at user-defined fields to add into our environment, now we're talking about actually modifying the way our tasks and panels display. 
you would need to be slightly familiar with the SAGE tables to be able to know that what we're actually looking for is our P main, main folder, if we wanted to make a change to the customer maintenance main tab. This can be difficult or a little difficult to negotiate, but there is another way that we can get to a panel within SAGE 100. I'm gonna close our customizer selection and instead go directly to that AR module go to the panel that I wanna take a look at, which is our customer maintenance. And again, on my header tab, what I'm looking for is a little bit of white space. When I'm hoping that you can see below this line, I have a little track of white space here. When I right click in that area, I get a pop-up menu and I'm gonna be looking at my panel settings and my customizer. This is the same thing we were just looking at, but instead of opening customizer and determining the panel, I go directly to the panel I wanna make the changes to and then launch the customizer. Some customers do find that this is a little bit easier to make sure that we're making changes in the right places. So in my customizer panel selection, you can see that I have some existing changes already in place. I do wanna point out that these panel changes can be specific to a user. They can be applied to all users. They can be also made specific to our companies or we can apply them to all of our companies. Checking this option allows us to create a brand new custom panel from scratch or create new information on the existing panel, I should say. This allows us to modify an already existing customized panel. So for our purposes, we're gonna go in and look at one that might already be modified. So let's take a peek at our ABC company one. When we launch customizer, it is showing me again that P main, that's what I was looking for. So we know we're in the right place. And I'm able to see everything that's going on, whether fields are hidden or not hidden. I have user-defined fields on this. Anything that's currently existing, I'm able to see in this view. It looks very similar to what I'm looking at in my customer AR header level. But again, there might be information that's missing. For example, credit limit here actually didn't show when I pulled up my, my customer maintenance. If I click on this field and I'm gonna double click, this credit limit field, if I go to my options, is actually a hidden field. In my example, my particular organization did not ever need to look at this field. And to make it easier for my admins to process data and data entry, I hid it so they would not have to worry about looking at it and worry about if they had to enter that information. I do want to point out that with the fields that are existing in Sage, I am able to change height. I'm able to change reposition and reposition them. I can choose the anchoring. I can also choose to make changes when it comes to how the text is actually displaying. So I'm going to choose a different field to show how this works. I'm going to go to URL address. I've got some people that actually don't know what URL means. So I'm gonna make it easier for them. And I'm actually gonna change the text to say, what is the website? Because I'm making this change, perhaps I wanna make it bold. And you can see I'm getting a preview down at the bottom here. Perhaps because it's a change, I wanna make it even bolder than that. And I'm gonna highlight it in red. I can choose a background color also. I can choose the justification. And again, in those option tabs, here's my property to hide this particular field and also change that position and size. I am gonna keep it where it currently exists. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay to that change. Now we can see it on the panel. I have not completely saved this and updated it yet, but this is giving me an example of what we're gonna be seeing here. Now, I also want to show that we can um, we can also move and drag and drop fields. So again, not to say that it's going to be extremely helpful, but we can just take a field and we can move. Maybe I need that state and provenance field up a little bit closer to the top. Fields can be moved within this panel as well. We can also make changes to the tab stops. Now, for anybody that does a lot of data entry, you know that using tabbing is very common to make sure that we're going through forms completely and not skipping any fields. Let's say in my example, for the way that my particular stage environment is set up, 
this address three option is never used in my environment. When I double click on this, I can choose again, because I'm, I'm in a main sage definition. It does tell me my initial value if I want to link a hot key to it. But here under options, I do want to show you it is set to tab stop, which means when I enter in this, this company information, I have to stop in address three. If this is not something that I ever use, I can choose to disable that tab stop. So it's skipped over. I can choose to hide the field. I can disable it. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can manipulate the data for your, your admins, for your data entry, so that they're able to do their job as quickly and efficiently as possible. I'm going to accept that change. One of the other things I want to show you is it is possible to add new text. So if I wanted to add, I just clicked on that text box over to the side here. I can sketch out the size of the text, but the tech box and put in here whatever text I would like. Um, again, maybe it's just something as simple as an update and I want to make that bold. Maybe I want to put it in italics. I can add that field within my panel. This is not a data entry field. This would just be a text update. If we did want to house data entry, we could choose to add one of those user defined fields. So here, clicking on this grid, I am now able to look at a list of my current user defines. I sketch out where I want that particular information to be placed on the panel. And you can see that UDF for our customer default warehouse we first looked at is one of the selections that I can add to this panel. You can see it is showing up. It's giving me the information and the description that I associated with that particular user defined field. And remember, we did set this one up. So we have a maximum of three characters that we can enter into this. So again, want to just recap. We've hidden credit limit. We've also hidden the credit limit check uh, in text box that houses information. We've changed our URL to website. We've added some additional text. We've asked, added a user defined field. And we've also taken away that address uh, third line tab stop. When I close this panel, it will ask me if I would like to save my panel customizations. And I would say yes. I do get pushed back to my main panel. I'm going to close this out. And now when I relaunch my customer maintenance, we'll be able to see those changes. So I'm gonna enter a new customer. I do wanna show you, I'm using tabbing, so I would have to give my customer a name. I, again, am going to address one, address two, and there's the skip on address three. We can see that those additional credit limit fields are hidden now. Our website has been updated from URL. We now have the customer default warehouse. Remember that is an, uh, that's an example of where we have our three character limit. I'm able to enter only three characters in this field. It is a free form field from the way we set it up. And here is that update. Maybe that special messaging I wanna keep on this customer or any addition, actually this would be all customers that use this panel. These are just some examples of changes that we can be made to your Sage environment and your panels. Again, these changes can be based on user, they can be company-wide, and they really can make, again, terminology, something where everybody understands what you're looking for, changes, additional information, anything that you want to capture within your Sage environment can now be added as well. And I do want to point out that going back into custom office, the other component that can be very important to customers is in your reports. You do have the ability to have access to a customizer summary report and a detailed report. This will tell you all of the information that is currently in your Sage environment that is currently customized. So you may have had users in your system that have been making customizations before you yourself might have been there. You can review those customizations, you review those UDFs, see what's currently in your environment. This video has covered the basics of Sage 100 Custom Office. Thank you again for your time today. And if you have any additional questions on Sage 100 functionality, please reach out to the Baracus Blum Computer Consulting Team.